Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome to the channel if you're new here. I recently made a video about a silica bag which Volkswagen put in their expansion bottles. It's known to split and that was introduced when they uh, first brought out the G13 coolant. So if you have a Volkswagen Skoda Seat or Audi, you might want to check that video out first. And in that video, I just talk about how to remove the silica bag and why you might want to. And it's quite interesting to see the comments I've had on that video as to how much it's actually cost people in repairs. And I'll put a link to that video at the top of the screen now and in the description below. And this is a little follow on from that where I'll be talking about the main reason why they put that silica bag in the expansion bottle and what we can do as a little preventative maintenance to help protect our engine. So here I have the G13 coolant. This was introduced by Volkswagen in 2013 and it was branded as a more environmentally friendly coolant as it's made out of glycerol as opposed to glycol like its predecessors. This coolant also has silica additives and silica is used as a corrosion inhibitor um, to help protect the aluminium components inside the engine. As this coolant ages, its silica inhibitors aren't as effective and therefore they put that little bag of silica gel in the expansion bottle to help top up the silica additives in this coolant. That's to extend the life of the coolant so it lasts the lifetime of the vehicle. Now it's also worth mentioning that the G13 coolant has now been superseded by the G12 Evo. That's for the majority of engines that Volkswagen make, all via the EA288 2 litre diesel engine which is what my car has. That still has to have the G13 coolant. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna be replacing my coolant with G13. So you can believe what I'm saying here, we've got the technical service bulletin from Volkswagen dated 2022. And it says in this document that coolants G11, G12, G12+, G12++, and G13 have been replaced by a newly introduced G12 Evo coolant. The Gen 3 EA288 TDI 2015 2.0-litre TDI engine must continue to use G13 coolant. And that's the engine my car's got, so we're sticking with the G13. It's also worth noting that if you mix the G12 Evo coolant with any of the predecessors listed here, and the coolant becomes brown, this is normal and it doesn't require you to drain the system and refill it. So if you've removed your silica bag, it's a good idea to do a partial coolant change just to top up the silica inhibitors in your coolant to make sure your engine is protected. Now typically I'd show you how to do a full coolant change, but in this case if we have a look at the engine's cooling system, we can see it's very complex. We've got various different circuits for the heater matrix, we've got a gear oil cooler, the EGR cooler, the intercooler, and then you've got the main radiator cooling circuit as well. And because there's so much going on in this cooling system, it becomes quite labor intensive to get all of the coolant out of it. So in this case, I'm just gonna be dropping off the bottom radiator hose and we're gonna be doing a partial coolant change. going to take the cap off the expansion bottle just to let air in and that will help the coolant drain out. To remove the under tray you've got all these torque screws around the edge a T25 and you've got three T40 ones at the back there. So we've got a hose on this end of the radiator and we've got a hose down here. This seems like the lowest point. This is the hose I want to disconnect. I've got my catch tray here. So I'm just going to get myself a little flat blade screwdriver in behind this metal clip here. Pull that back. 
and then hopefully we should be able to give this hose a wiggle there we go it's coming the drain will clean it out Once your coolant stopped draining out, reconnect the hose. Just push that back on. Push the clip back in. I'm just gonna measure out how much of the coolant we've actually extracted so that when I put the fresh stuff back in, I can make sure that we haven't got any air locks. Okay, that's one litre. call it two litres so we want to make sure two litres goes back in. If you're replacing your coolant with the G12 Evo Volkswagen's latest coolant then that comes pre-mixed and I'll put a link to that one in the description below and if you buy it through the link you'll also be supporting the channel so thank you if you buy it through the link you don't pay any more it just means I get a small kickback off of that purchase. If you're going for the G13 coolant because you've got the EA288 diesel engine like I've got the two litre diesel then you may have to dilute it. Again, I'll put a link to this one in the description below as well. And I'm gonna go for a 50-50 mix and that gives us protection up to minus 36 degrees, which is absolutely fine for the UK climate. I just wanna to briefly touch on health and safety as well when using coolant because it is very harmful. It's a poison, it's toxic. Um, be very careful when you're handling it. Make sure you wear gloves and goggles. Do as I say, not as I do. And it's also harmful for the environment. So when you come to dispose of your old coolant, make sure you do it in a responsible manner and dispose of it at your local recycling center. Keep this out of the way of your pets and children because if they get hold of it, it could cause real harm. I'm gonna be using a 50-50 mix of my coolant and deionized water. It has to be deionized because you get impurities in the tap water. So 500 mils of this and 500 of this. The recommended method for filling this cooling system is to use a vacuum filling tool, but I'm a bit old school, I don't really wanna do that. It's just another expense to buy that tool. And is it really necessary when I'm only doing a partial change? We'll find out. By using the vacuum filling tool, you create a vacuum in the cooling system, and then you use that vacuum to draw the coolant in, therefore you won't have any air in it. And because I'm not using the vacuum filling tool, it's gonna to take longer because we're gonna to have to manually bleed the air out of the system. It's important to fill the system slowly so that you allow time for the air to escape. I've put one liter back in, and we haven't got any bubbles coming out of the expansion bottle now. So we need to encourage the air out by squeezing the hoses. So let's go back underneath and just squeeze the radiator hoses to try and push any of the air out. Right, that's filled up to the max. I'm now gonna start the engine, let the coolant circulate and just top it up as required. I'm just gonna rev the car a little bit to warm it up. And then as it warms up, it should open the thermostat and allow the coolant to circulate around the radiator and we can get the air out of it. While we're waiting for the engine to warm up, I'm gonna go back underneath and refit the under tray. And once the engine's up to temperature, the water pump will start to circulate the coolant around and you'll be able to get the rest of the air out. It's important to check your expansion bottle level and top it up as required. So this is cooling down now and as you can see the levels drop below minimum. So let's top it up to the maximum again. The next time you take your car for a drive, you'll more than likely dislodge some more air and the coolant level will drop again. So keep an eye on it and top it up as you need to. 
but remember when you top it up do it when the engine's cold because the expansion bottle will be under pressure as it heats up thank you for watching this video i hope you found it useful if you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed if you click the alarm bell you'll get notifications when i post new videos and hopefully i'll see you in the next one cheers guys take care